obviously an incredible win. Um, I want to start by obviously saying thank you. The band was a factor. I mean, there's 300 of them there and their families and, and it was just a little bit more of a different atmosphere out there. All the student athletes, um, you could notice a difference. Uh, one thing that I did notice, I, I thought our guys weren't as into it and emotional early on in the game. I just kind of saw it in their eyes and uh, I was worried just a little bit, but I realized, you know, as the game went along, it was, it was an incredible focus. It was uh, a mindset of understanding and knowing um, what happened to us with this group last year and what we needed to do to be successful. And I saw us take probably a really big, I know the, the score is what it is, but for me watching and seeing it from the inside out, I think we took a really big step maturity wise about how you handle big games and how you handle um, shots at somebody that, uh, it's got your number, and uh, I'm really, really proud of these guys. Too. Hey, guys, got any questions? Justin, want to this up? Coach, how much was the revenge factor or, or just the rematch of the last two games from last year? Was that, was that a narrative this week? Revenge is not something we talked about because revenge is kind of a negative term. It kind of gets emotional, and we want to play with emotion, but we don't want to be emotional. So we, we kind of used it as a redemption. I mean, redemption is the act of taking um, – uh, something, something that we believe that, you know, we've worked for. Um, I can't say that we deserve it because they beat us last year, uh, but we really put an emphasis on redemption, uh, not, not revenge. Coach how, how fun, coach, how fun is it to coach a defense that performs at all three levels the way this defense has the past couple of weeks? It's fun. I can't say I do a whole lot of coaching with them. I kind of leave it to those guys, as you can tell. Um, during the week, I might have a little bit to say about it, but uh, it, it's actually got to the point where it was really fun to kind of harass Coach Freeman after they ran the ball for four or five yards on the second or third to last play of the game. I said, there, once you're minus yardage on rushing, and you see them get a little bit greedy and start to get upset. But uh, I think that uh, we got to find a way to enjoy some of these opportunities and these things because our kids and, and our coaches and this whole entire group has worked really hard uh, to be in this position. Another great start for Dez. You know, what is he doing out there now in these last two games? Are you seeing that it's different from these previous three? Well, I think it's a combination. I don't think there's any one thing. It's like, oh, he, he's practicing a lot better. Or, you know, no, I think the reality is he's becoming more comfortable with the guys that are around him. And if you really look back at it, I mean, the protection is, is really a big, big factor. And um, when you start to keep, get a little more comfortable in there, knowing that those big guys up front are really locked in and doing a really good job, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you can, you can take your time a little bit. You can set your feet a little better. You can deliver the ball a little better. You can follow through a little better. All those things kind of add up together to, to gain some more confidence. <clears throat> and uh, I think it's showing. What are you guys so much better at than you were when you faced Memphis 11 months ago? Pardon me, I didn't hear that. What are you so much better at um, than you were when you faced Memphis 11 months ago? I, I, I don't know if there's any one thing I could put pinpoint to say we're, we're better at this than we were um, you know when we played them twice last year I, I, I do believe that we are playing a little cleaner I, th I think we got a, a better rhythm I think we have a better idea of who we are um, but like I've said before I think probably one of the biggest things is, is I think we're a much more mature team that understands what it takes to to, to be in those really big games and how emotionally you got to be able to handle it Luke, do you feel like your, your team has to almost approach perfection coming down the stretch to catch the eye of, of the selection committee? You know, like I said, the thing I told them in the locker room, I said, guys, don't believe the hype out there. It, it is what it is. We got to continue to focus on the things that we need to do. Um, you know, I, I don't believe, I think a lot of things got to continue to fall in place. And um, whatever that means, whatever that is, I, I don't know. Um, but I think for us to not, lose sight of what it is that we need to do and let everybody else continue to worry about those ex external things. Um, you know, we've got some really big games coming up. And, and I think just this year in particular, there's been so much in the last six months from obviously COVID to social issues to um, not being around each other. It just, there's so much that piles upon it. I don't, um, I, obviously I don't want our guys to worry about it. I don't want our guys to get into the top of it. Um, but I think that we just need to handle the things that we can handle. Two weeks got to the 
quarterback more than any uh, other game previously this season? Was that an emphasis in practice this week? Well, I, I, off the off the cuff, I, I think that we didn't in, in some way. I, I don't think that we were as maybe aggressive defensively on um, some of our first and second down stuff. Uh, they gave him a little bit of time to sit. I know, obviously, he didn't. I mean, he had some some yards, obviously, um, but he also scrambled a little bit on us too. So. I think there's a balance there. I think that on third down, I think we did a pretty darn good job at, at uh, creating some havoc and, and mixing in 4D linemen and 3D linemen and a lot of different things we, we do. Um, but I think when we go back and look at it, there's going to be some really good on-body coverage that's going to give us some more opportunities up front. So that's how the whole works as a whole. Two weeks in a row for Renfro and Oakland in with that starting line. Uh, once again, looked like like they – put it all together and had a really strong game in, on the interior? Yeah, it, it's tough. I mean, you know, the good thing is you're, you're building depth. The, the tough thing is, is you've got some guys you really counted on and put you in a really good situation in your car and, and, and Coop that are, that are getting back now and getting back to where they were. And, um, you know, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, it's going to be good for us to have some more depth. We just got to make sure we can handle all the different emotions that go along with that. And, um, those are some unique positions and no matter what, I mean, it's, they're, I can't tell you a year that somebody goes through that, that doesn't have to have some changeable parts, especially up front on the offensive line. And um, we're going to need all, all seven of those guys for sure. You talked earlier this week that the key to this game would be whoever finishes. Are you surprised that the game didn't even really come down to, to the end in any way? Yeah, you don't know. I mean, I said that to those guys that get locked room. I said, this is all we preached was, you know, like last week, we've got to get to the fourth quarter and see if our training is what it, we believe it is. And um, in some ways, I mean, it's still a 21-10 game at half. You know, obviously, I think we felt like we had some good control, um, both offensive line-wise and defensive line-wise. But they were getting the ball to come out to start the second half. And we knew that we were going to get a couple shots. And, uh, you know, to come out and get that big fourth down stop, I think, on the first drive, really kind of changed and shifted a lot of momentum. I think that was a big body blow that probably took its toll before the fourth quarter. You know there's going to be CFP chatter, and I know you guys have goals you want to, you know, complete before the end of the season, but how much are you talking to your team and, and maybe even want the fan base to enjoy how well this team is CFP, Is that like PDFs? Like, we'll send PDFs. Yeah, I don't even know what CFP is. I know this, I'm more concerned with, it's Halloween, it's 345, our guys have got a little more time off than, than they did last week when we got home at five in the morning. Um, so I think that there's a lot of other things out there that we'll have to be able to handle before we have to worry about the PDFs or the CFs, whatever's, um, you know. So we still got some work to do here, especially to finish this day out being smart. So is that a yes to enjoying it? To enjoying what? Halloween. How well you're playing right now? I'll try. <laughs> maybe, maybe I could take some kids trick or treating if we can. You guys stop asking questions. I can get home. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Does how much of the game plan was to to push the ball down the field and try to take advantage of a defense that that had maybe struggled a little bit against the pass so far this year? Oh, uh, we knew that when we got into certain formations that they were going to match um, certain defensive backs up on some of our guys, um, in which we thought we had an advantage. So you know, with the one where we had Trey motion out wide, starting the backfield motion out wide, we, we that was just matchups, and then uh, the corner had went out with um, with Trey Tucker. So I gave it to AP, and AP went up and obviously grabbed that. But, uh, you know, it's really just matchups at the end of the day. You talked earlier this week that the way you ran against SMU might help open things up in the run and pass game. Did you see that today? Uh, yes. Um, you know, they accounted for me a lot of the times, but they still didn't have answers for some of our stuff. Um, and so Coach Jimbrock did a great job of, you know, just going back to it and keep calling it until they – until they fixed it, um, and, and they really never had an answer for it, so we just kept running.
Sorry, I was muted. Des, you uh, you lost your meal last game. What did you eat today? And are you going to make sure you eat that every game now for after the night? Such a day, such a great game. Uh, yeah, I mean, my meals, you know, pregame doesn't really change. Like I said, uh, it was just a little stomach bug last week. Um, shouldn't happen again. Probably won't happen again. Uh, um, but I'm sorry for the disappointment. But what's happening for you out there? You're obviously seeing something differently or playing a lot better. What's happening today? Um, the game's just slowing down. I'm just going out there and being me, um, just playing football and, and enjoying the game, really just having fun with it, um, with all, all 11 guys out there on the field. Um, you can see it um, from the offensive line to the wide receivers to the DBs, you know, all, all, all people on the field, we're, we're just out there having fun. Des, this is – go ahead, Charlie. Thank you. Uh, how much was this on your mind early this season? Can you repeat the question, please? How often was last year's game against Memphis uh, in the championship game on your mind during the offseason and even this season? Um, you know, early in the offseason, January, February, obviously it was, you know, very fresh to us. Um, so, you, you know, looking back then, it was a long time until we had even played football yet. Um, but then coming up on it, you know, today we obviously we think about it. But, you know, when you start the season, you got to take it one game at a time. So you can't look forward to any other games. Um, so, you know, once we got here this past week, um, we really just focus on, you know, not not necessarily revenge because Coach Fix said revenge is really like a negative, taking in negative terms. Um, so we just want to talk about like redemption and, you know, gaining something back that they have. Um, so, you know, that's really what we went out there on with the, me the mentality we played with today. This is two games in a row where you guys have kind of taken somebody's soul in the fourth quarter. Does it feel like offensively you're starting to successfully wear teams down and to be able to, to run the ball like you have at the end of games the past two weeks? Yeah, and I think it starts up front. Um, you know, up front, our big guys are doing a, a heck of a job um, up front moving the guys. And I think, you know, once we just keep it on them and keep it going, um, it's really hard to stop us. Um, and I think, you know, it really just starts with the big guys up front. Des, these last two games for you have looked much, much improved from the first three, just statistically speaking. Did you feel or hear any of the stuff being said about you? I heard on the broadcast they said you maybe were motivated by some doubters uh, in the, after the first couple of games of the season, mentioning quarterback competition and all that. Did that fuel you and motivate you to step up your game? Uh, I'm not one to, to look at social media and negative things like that. Um, but, you know, obviously I knew from, you know, obviously starting for 25, 26 games or whatever it was, um, you know, an expectation that I had set for myself and set for the team. Um, so when I wasn't meeting those expectations, I knew that something had to step up and something had to get going. Um, and, you know, I did just really start a week of practice, just putting it into overdrive um, and get going. Hey, happy Halloween, everyone. season did you expect how well you guys have played was that the expectation on your end too yeah that's the mindset that we all have we all have that we're all greedy that's what coaches um really hitting on we're all greedy we don't want the offense to get a yard so that's our mindset going into the season going into the, every game so the expectation is what we have darian what's it like to be on a, a unit usually there's there's you know, one position group that's a strength. And with this, the, you know, the front the front's doing their job, linebackers are doing their job, secondary's doing their job. What's it like to be on a defense like that where there's no weak spot? Um, it's fun. It's fun. It's known that even if you don't do your job technically, you have somebody that will be there and help you out. And sometimes it can cause selfishness with like saying that, you've seen a bunch of people making plays and maybe now you're not making the play that game. But I mean, it's just, we're all a brotherhood and it's fun, man. It's fun knowing that everyone's going to do their job. 
Darian, how satisfying was it to look up at the scoreboard and see 10 points for Memphis? <laughs> really satisfying. satisfying. Um, obviously, the two games last year, looking up on the scoreboard and seeing that, not even this, just 10 points, just the 49 to 10, just the big difference that we, from last year to this year, is just great, man. And it really brings us confidence into uh, further out in the season. You just played two of the best offenses in this conference. Did it go even better than, than you could have expected? Like I said, our expectations are high. So we, would, we, want to do, we want to do better. We want to have zero points on the board after the game. And maybe that's not realistic, but that's our mindset going into every game. How much different is it this year for you, a year in the system, and, and maybe – uh, are you able to play a little bit more free right now? Is it is it not thinking and you're just letting it go? Yeah, I feel like since I've been here for a year and a half now and I'm getting bigger, I'm getting stronger, I can see things more clearly now. Um, I feel like everything's just coming to me easily, easier now than it was last year, for sure. My guy is already getting some attention for his thriller dance after his sack. Did you uh, did you catch that? Do you have any comment on his news? He told us. He told us on the side. I saw him practicing it on the sideline, so I knew I knew it was coming. What's it like having a guy like that in front of you this year? The way he's playing. Amazing, man! All of our D line. Shout out to all of our D line, man. They're they're really incredible, and it's fun. Really fun playing with them. What kind of impact did the crowd have today? I mean, it still wasn't huge, but there were more people here. It was obviously a louder and more vibrant. How did that impact you guys' play today? The impact of us really good because we have we could have allowed to bring more family now. So having more family there for each individual really like makes us play with a different like mindset, makes us play with more grit, you know what I mean? Just stuff like that. So it was really, I mean, we, we want fans, man. We want fans, we miss the fans and it would be good to get them back. Anything else for Mr. Beavers? All right, thanks guys. Good.